Hi, my name is Doug Fink, and I want to do a demo of two things. Visual Studio 2010 comes with a new file type called a directed uh, graph document, and we can generate that from PowerShell and come up with some interesting graph visualizations. So let's go through 2010 a little bit and then jump into some PowerShell. So here, I will create a new directed graph document. We'll view the DGML. We'll put that in horizontal mode. And here, I can actually use IntelliSense, bring up a link, change the source and target to A and B. And up top, we can see the two nodes as well as the edge. Let's add a couple more. We'll add C and D. And we can see the graph changed. We can also put this into different formats. We can go left to right, right to left, or a forced, or we can force a directed layout. So let's jump over to PowerShell, and we will actually create this XML on the fly and launch it into Visual Studio 2010. Okay, here's a function called convert to DGML. And what it will do is it has a process block where we can pipe a list of objects that have two properties, a property called source and a property called target as default. And when we pipe that in, we will, for each object, we'll create a new link. And this new link function will generate the XML, the link XML uh, snippet that we saw before. And when all those objects are processed, we'll come down here and wrap it in a directed graph tag and then launch that into Visual Studio. So let's take a look at a simple graph. And we're going to create the same graph we saw that we just did manually. We will create, do a new source target on A, B, A, C, and A, D. Here's the function. It takes a source and a target, and it creates a new object with two properties, a source property and a target property. We pass all that and pipe it into convert DGML. We save it to a file, and we invoke that item, which will launch Visual Studio and show us our graph. So we'll press F5, and we get the same graph. Again, we can change the shape of the view. Good. Let's go back to PowerShell. And let's work on some other kinds of interesting data. Here I have uh, some tainted peanut butter data that shows recalling firms and the brands that were tainted. Uh, let's take a look at some of those records. Let's grab five records out of that file. Comma separated value has a bunch of headings which define the properties of the object. And here's the data below. So I will use the import CSV commandlet in PowerShell. It'll create an object with all those properties uh, one at a time for each record in the file. We'll pipe that into convert to DGML. And I'll tell it I want to see recalling firm as the source and the category as the target. We'll save that to a file. And then we'll do an invoke item, which will again launch Visual Studio. Let's press F5. And that's our first pass at the graph. I can zoom in on this and move it around. I can see all the different recalling firms that had snack bars. We can see these particular companies uh, had uh, pet, fu pet food products. We can change the shape of this graph. A little easier to read, perhaps. Uh, cookies. We can see candy. We can see that this company had both cookies and candy products that had to get recalled. And right, let's exit out of this and do another example. So here we can do the same data file, but instead of looking at the recalling firm and uh, the category, let's look at the recalling firm and the brand names that they were affected. Press F5. Zoom in, and this company, these companies had these, this brand name. Let's go up top. 
this recalling firm had these different brand names that were recalled. And we'll go on to a final example. We won't use a data file. What we'll use is we'll get the processes on this running box or the processes running on this box. And this also is a PowerShell commandlet. And it has a name and a company property. But using the select object, I'm going to rename those two properties. Company, I'm going to rename to source. And name, I'm going to rename to target. Again, we're going to convert it to, to DGML, save it to a file, and then we'll invoke Visual Studio 2010. Press F5. And we can see on my box, Microsoft owns all these processes here. And there's a few others that I have running. So that's a little quick trip through generating DGML with PowerShell. You can download the code and give it a try. Thanks for listening.